When we first heard about the ulcer bacteria, H. pylori, we thought we'd just give everybody antibiotics and it would take care of the problem. Just get rid of it, right? Yeah, and we also found out that H. pylori could cause stomach cancer and that 50% of people have H. pylori. But you know, lately they've been doing studies and finding out that there are some actually good things about having H. pylori because it can prevent another kind of cancer, which is esophageal cancer. And another thing that they just found out that it could do besides preventing asthma is that it can prevent diarrheal diseases. It's interesting. It just shows you how complex the human body is and how we interact with Mother Nature in ways sometimes that seem perplexing to us. So we need to not just go and do everything aggressively when we find something out that's bad in one place like in the stomach. And I've always thought for years that the H. pylori was something that was in everybody for the most part in small amounts and it's really only when it overgrows and there's a volume there that's big enough that uh, it can make enough toxin to make us sick and if it's just there in small amounts it's just there living in harmony with the other bacteria that are there. You know sometimes there's a reason why we have things in our bodies and we're always, always trying is. to outsmart nature. Exactly. Just like you know with probiotics also. Yeah well that's right. But evidently one of the things that H. pylori does is it is it puts the immune system into overdrive. Well this is what their theory is. They're saying that maybe when you have H. pylori in you that it's stimulating the immune system constantly and it's revving it up so that when you get a bacterial infection that can cause diarrhea it'll be ready to go there. Like the Shigella or E. coli. Yeah but we, al we also know that it, it does some interesting things to block the inflammatory response and it may have something to do with that just as it does in the case of protecting against asthma that it might have some particular value to us. So I think what we need to do is appreciate that our intestinal tract is far more complex than we realize. When we've got a thousand different species of microbes that live in the gut in a complex ecosystem and that it, it adapts to depending on, on how we live our life, what we eat, uh, how much stress we're under, how much sleep we get, uh, all the different kinds of things that affect uh, our lifestyle it adapts to it. And think of all the medication we give people that have ulcers besides antibiotics. Exactly. Usually you give them two different kinds. And then there are the proton pump inhibitors which are like Nexium and the purple pill and, and Prilosec uh -huh. and that kind of thing. Mass effects. Yeah, there are a lot of those. And you and pay a price. And bismol that's another one. I mean, every time you put drugs in the human body, you're going to get side effects that you don't want. And it sounds so innocuous that you just take a little Nexium or Prilosec or Asifex or whichever those of those drugs you want to. And yes, it's going to knock the acid out. And yes, it's going to take away the symptoms because you won't have near as much in the way of pain from it. But it's also going to cause some long-term effects if you take it for more than about six or eight weeks, which even includes becoming dependent on it. And when they did studies showing uh, that young men who were on this for eight weeks and tried to stop it, 40% of them couldn't get off the drug because it flared up their symptoms. And then you're looking at things like not being able to digest your food right because the acid's not there, uh, and being uh, having an increased risk for osteoporosis. It goes up 45% after you've been on it for a couple of years because you can't absorb calcium or magnesium or iron. Uh, and some of the other things it does as well. Uh, B12 deficiency is, is something because you can't absorb B12 if you're taking, if you don't have any acid there. So the aggressive nature that, and stance that we've taken for people who have H. pylori and have ulcers is backfiring in st to a large extent because we are taking it too long because a lot of people don't get well that fast when they're taking these drugs because their ulcer is too much or they're having other kinds of uh, problems that are causing the pain. And, our, and on our website we have a lot of natural um, solutions for ulcers. Oh, tremendous stuff that's safe. And you're looking at things like probiotics and mastic gum, uh, maybe a little L-glutamine. Uh, DGL. DGL is a wonderful one because it, it coats the intestinal tract where the ulcer is and, and, and helps it a lot. So those are the kinds of things that I think make more sense than just being a, a one-trick pony where we're just looking at uh, killing all the bugs because we, we know that if we kill them that it'll help that person who's got the ulcer a little bit faster. But then there's the side effects of the antibiotics as well, which we shouldn't talk about. 
that can totally change the way the microflora of the intestinal tract is and also has its own side effects. I mean, some of them cause... Diarrhea. <laughs> well, they will cause diarrhea, diarrhea, all kinds of GI effects, but also can cause a lot of other serious problems like hearing loss, which we don't realize that antibiotics do in, in too many people, or causing kidney failure or liver failure and jaundice that goes with it. So when we're looking at, at, at a bug like H. pylori and our first take on it that it's a bad guy, it might be smarter to try and 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 help your body to deal with the H. pylori in a more natural way. I'm not big on using the antibiotics for people who have ulcers unless it's necessary. We can do a lot to maintain a normal flora there by adding probiotics, which are the friendly bacteria, and supporting uh, the gut with things like L-glutamine so that it can repair itself, or UltraClear Sustain, or products like it. And the other things that I mentioned earlier, if we'll approach it that way, we'll stay out of trouble we may be more effective in the long term uh, in, in helping people who have ulcers, have them not come back. And in general, I think people do quite well with that approach.